big shout out to, to Rodney Rush over in Albuquerque. We met Rodney on the Giving It All tour with Mike Hogg. Tui, downtown Tui, just fantastic, fantastic, lovable dude. I knew immediately that, that Tui was gonna be a part of like Boombox's sound and like what we've got going on. Big shout out to my homie Beggar So, does all of our art. He crushes all of our design. He created the Tape Eater, which is our mascot, which we sell. Also on the album, we have a, a song called Trouble, which was produced by Electric Moses, who's a Kings of the Jungle affiliate. I've never formally met him face to face. Moses, if you're out there, what's up, dog? Nice to meet you. Thank you for a beat that is absolutely amazing. Big shout out to Kings of the Jungle, because you know, without Kip and Kings, a lot of this wouldn't even be possible. Cool Hands Luke, super sick. He produced uh, the big one. Sam Roberts, just super, super intelligent lyricist. Chris Frank is on the album. The features and affiliates that are on the album is really what kind of holds that together. It's not just us, you know what I mean? There's a lot of people. It's a whole crew, a whole team. Yeah, man, we got a really, really solid crew. DJ 001 is like the backbone of what we do as a DJ in our group, but he's also like a producer. He plays like a hundred instruments, so in the studio when we're together, it's just like this phenomenal vibe that we get together. DJ 001 is the sound of the Boombox Bros. Well, Smalls is part of the trio that is Boombox Bros. His part is one-third of everything that is the Boombox Bros. Not much I could say to touch on the scene, except for that uh, really proud of where everybody's at now, everybody's grown up, and for whatever reasons, squashed any qualms, and uh, we're able to perpetuate hip hop in Flagstaff as a more positive note, and be able to get back into some of these venues, be on a positive vibe, and, and be welcomed back into the scene of downtown Flagstaff and Flagstaff as, as we know it. For me, who Kip Killigan is, is he's like a bridge into the world of music that Flagstaff doesn't really see. I think in that respect, it's been a, uh, a blessing, you know? He's like a coach, if you would, for the Boombox Bros. Uh, like a Vince Lombardi. I don't know, dude. He's a facilitator. I mean, he's a friend first and foremost, but he, he, he's the one who gets the things done. We've, we've got the dreams and we know what we want to do. We don't know how to do it. <laughs> so he's, he's a director and a facilitator. Who is Kip Killigan to me? He to me is, is a friend and a partner in all kinds of business and what we're trying to get done with music, an inspirational coach and a life coach. Kip Killigan's role in the Boombox Bros, the team owner. DJ 001. The first time I remember meeting him was at a show that we were gonna do at the Orpheum at Nine Rhymes 3. He's like the type of DJ that's gonna sit there and have a conversation with you while he's spinning. So he's just like, hey man, what's going on? How's it going? And I'm like, good dude, good, how's your night going? He's like, great, this is fantastic. You ready? I'm like, yeah, I think I'm ready. It was definitely one of my more faded evenings because I remember freestyling a whole bunch and I'm coming off stage and I see 001 standing back towards the exit. He's like, freestyle king, what's up man? And just like keeps walking past me. I don't know what to think of this guy, man. Wears a bandana, he's got hair like a pineapple. It's freaking ridiculous. Yeah, that was my first time meeting him. One night, Hog shows up and he's like, yo, man, I'm trying to sell, I think he was selling CDs. Might have been selling t-shirts. Could have been selling cheeseburgers, for all I know. Stress Flores, okay, you know what I mean? I, I keep it kind of as fuck when it comes to the hair products. He, Shows up, hey man, I'm selling some stuff. I gotta get rent paid. And like, can I get on the mic? 
James Higby's like, yeah, 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 sure. And so I'm up on the platform performing and Hog comes up and grabs the microphone. And, Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the, the sounds of DJ Stump. I turned around to him and I'm like, hey man, it's, uh, it's, it's DJ 001. He looks right at me, he goes, all right, all right, all right, and then grabs the mic right up. Ladies and gentlemen, DJ Stump in the house! <laughs> and then breaks off into like a freestyle. It was, <laughs> it was funny. Smalls is Colin Havlin. We actually met hanging outside one of the shows I had come up to do. My boy Troy was living up here and he had hooked us up, slid in and did a show. That was the first time that Smalls had ever seen me rap and I think that he bought my CD. He had like five bucks and I think he either bought my CD or bought that other guy's CD and felt bad for it and then bought it later. You know, throughout the years I'd always seen him at showcases, at different events. Transfer did this thing called Night of Rhymes with RJ at the Orpheum. I think he performed and that was the first time that I kind of said to myself, wow, this kid's really good. It'd be cool to do a project with him. Transfer started a thing down at uh, Monty V called Wordplay. At the end of the night, it was, you know, the last hour or whatever was open to freestyle. It was left down to Hog and Smalls. And I sat there with my homie Caspian and listened to them for an hour plus, pass back and forth and like wittingly. Collapse, collapse, collapse. And there's no third verse on that, right? Cool. Joke with each other and back and forth and, and one would throw a punchline and one would pull out of that punchline. Belly jokes and all kinds of belly bumping going on. I mean, it was, you know, the fat guy deluxe. After that night, I told my homie, there's something about those guys. I gotta get that guy Smalls to like rap with Hog and do something with him. Uh, it's the return of the triple B. No, it's not a mystery. The dynamic triple team's back with a new routine. Attack like a killer bee, smash like gorilla feet. We rap like the snacks that are packed in a vending machine. Who are we? That's a really good question. The guy's kicking rhymes in the parking lot session. When me and Justin were finished doing our project, uh, giving it all, we just kind of brought him in. We were just going to try to do a feature for the new project. What do you think about pulling Smalls in for a feature? After a few sessions, it just kind of turned into the Boombox Bros. We got together with Smalls and asked him if he'd be down. You guys asked if I would think about being in a group, the three of us. And I was like, why not? Obliged to just see if we could make something happen. I think that Colin never really expected to do what we've done in the time that we've done it in. When, you know, we started discussing how we would be as a group as far as family friendly and like try to put our best foot forward and not be, you know, negative about stuff. It's like, well, how's that gonna work? And here we are already and it's working great. Oh my goodness, working hard and nothing. In about 90 days, we built a, an album called Giving It All, which really only exists right now in like a, a physical copy. I think we only sold 150, 200 copies of that in like New Mexico, Arizona, and we went into California. We put that whole album together in like 90 days. Once it happened, it was just like every night, we just pound, pound, pound. We're gonna get a song out of this, get a song out of this, get a song out of this, and I'd go back in and like the weekends and edit all of those and like put them all together and add arrangement pieces and all of the stuff that needed to happen to make it happen. While we were doing that, he was in the process of recording Breathing Sunshine with Kings of the Jungle, Cool Hands Luke, Kip was a part of that, Chaita Singley. Hog was recording Breathing Sunshine at a much slower pace. They'd had it a year plus in the making. And then I came along and was like, yo man, let's do an album. And it just started gelling so fast. And it really spurred the Kings of the Jungle guys, who I didn't have much affiliation with at the time. It spurred them into, well, we need to make this Breathing Sunshine thing happen. And actually at the end of Breathing Sunshine, I got to engineer all of the vocals because what we had done on Giving It All had sounded so good for Hog's voice. Kip came to me and was like, I'd like you to engineer for Hog what we're doing for this other project. That was me and Hogg's really first tie-in with him. That we're gonna do something with Kings of the Jungle. Wait, what was the question? One more time? Uh, <laughs> I, I wanna hear about Kings of the Jungle. 
Me and Kip have been homies for a long, long time, like since junior high school. He was one of the people that got me motivated, inspired to mix records. I always, always looked up to him, and then when, when he started the record label, you know, he asked me to be a part of that. The first thing that I put out officially on Kings of the Jungle was Breathing Sunshine, which I did with Mike Hogg, who's uh, part of the Boombox Brothers. In the crowd ain't no stopping us now. Dreams are becoming reality. Studio bound, hearing the album developing. On an independent route, not looking for a salary. Small zitter with a bit of your verbal artillery. Damn, Hogg, you healing me. Bless Mike so willing. Smoke slow, the recipe, post no feelings. I started making music with Kip Killigan sometime in the early 2000s. We had been talking a lot about making music. A lot of people told us that we should make music together. If you hear Kip's reason for making music, it's pretty similar to mine. We just wanted stuff to listen to in the car. Kip liked the car bass and the Miami bass and bass in general. Uh, we started making hip hop at first. Then we made uh, Jungle Track about a year later. Went to LA, got it cut to vinyl, got it released. In 2012, we wanted to start putting out our own records and having some more control over the distribution. And so that's when uh, him and Jake started Kings of the Jungle. Looking forward to what's going to come about in the next few years. It's going to be some heat. Mine and Hogg's relationship has developed in so much so that it was, it started off as just like these two guys who were artists who wanted to like maybe collab with each other and definitely knew who each other were into way more of a family feel in like that 90 days where we were making, giving it all. I helped him and he helped me. Like I was in massive distraught from a bad relationship when coming out of insanity with uh, family stuff and baby mama and like my own kids and all this thing. Uh, and Hogg was in a place where he was homeless, essentially, in Flagstaff. And we both helped each other in just being a shoulder to kind of cry on for each other. And in that making music that became the Giving It All record. I met Kip through my friend Mike Hefley, who also the guy that I would say introduced me to rap. Kip used to hang out with Liz Hefley out in Cheshire, where they all live. Kip was a skateboarder at the time, and Mike and I were just starting to skateboard, so we were like really intrigued by anyone that was better on a deck than us. Kip could already like kick flip and 360 flip. Also, Mike's sister was really cute. Um, I can say that now, you know, since we're grown men. But uh, <laughs> so anything to do with Liz, we were always uh, kind of scouting out and seeing what she was up to. So the fact that Kip was always hanging around, that's how I first met him. I've known Colin the longest, uh, Smalls. AKA a sale. <laughs> One of my buddies that I grew up with in high school. Skate demos at like Art Trek and stuff downtown, and uh, Kip was always DJing out of the back of a random U Haul, and he'd always be yelling things at people like, Come get your water if you don't want to die. And I was like, Man, whoever that guy is, he's freaking hilarious. I gotta get to know that dude. Very talented. Uh, lyricist and MC. If your system's at the minimum, then turn it up loud. Peter Piper picked a pepper, but he never packed a pistol. We got bars that stick with you like the bars of a thistle. Keep it beneficial with the hammer and the chisel. Leave our name in the game, triple B the initial. Probably a few years before Boombox happened, but it started becoming more apparent that he was going to do something as an MC. Another pump from the bait helped to take me away with an Irish goodbye, so there's no time to wait. I hung out with a bunch of skater kids that hung out at Bushmaster Skate Park. They would always talk about shows that, that local cats would do down at this place called The Joint. I ran a night at The Joint where I was DJing hip hop music. Troy Thurman, he uh, took me down there. That was the first night I'd ever seen Kip Killigan. Hog came up to me and was just, uh, you know, Hog. He was really loud and abrasive and yo, yo, yo. What's up, you now chilling with the Boombox Bros? He yeah. told me that he was an MC, a uh, hip hop MC guy. All these rappers sound the same like sheep in a herd or cattle trying to battle using cheap racial slurs. When the cat comes around, they'll be playing Tweety Bird. He was wearing this this chain thing. It had like all kinds of jewels on it. it made it all sparkly. They had really cheap drinks, so everybody got really drunk. 
I got really drunk and I was like, I'm gonna snatch that chain off of it. Later down the line, through the grapevine, I figured out how much of a mouth he had on him too. <laughs> Told somebody that he was going to snatch my chain. There's a bunch of cats that were uh, kind of salty about it for a while and now it's just like become like this joke. You know, I'm proud of the guy and I'm glad that he, he goes for the gusto sometimes when he's talking about things and that's, that's why we call him the hog. And, as well with you, um, with DJ 001 there, he, you know, there was some rabble rousing. But I never actually got to meet the guy until a few years ago. We've kind of been knowing of each other for some years, but I kind of just had, had blanked you out of my mind for a long time. Came together in more of a, not that I didn't respect him or anything, but just kind of being very disrespectful on the internet to gain his attention, to grasp his attention and be like, hey man, you should pay attention to what I'm doing. It was funny because I got this private message on Facebook from DJ001 talking about uh, that he had just bought my album online. It was time to take music to a higher level and what was I still doing messing around with this stuff. <laughs> come, come full circle. The guy still doesn't understand jungle music, but he supports me and supports what I'm doing to the fullest. We've created a really good connection. Developed sort of a network and a friendship that is uh, built up to the Boombox Bros. Become, at this point, like partners as far as uh, what's going on with Boombox and life in general. Freaking on that ONOFF switch. What I've been told and what I understand, he's been doing it since the 90s, so it's not, it's not solidified enough, <laughs> uh, enough credentials for what really uh, you need nowadays to be in the game. I don't know what else is, I don't know many other people that can say, I've been doing this since the 90s and consistently have been doing it. Kip is totally known as drum and bass jungle music internationally. The old man that's seen He's just seen a lot. He was a uh, Mestizo's DJ. And he's seen tons of other acts and DJed for tons of other acts. He could sit and all night long entertain you with uh, stories about people that you're interested in or that you've listened to. And he's met these people or he's hung out with these people. So that's what I mean in like the grandfather sense of he, he is to our, our group. He's the, the old man that's seen all of it one time over and at least one time over. Kip is that guy in our crew who like, He's already been to the hip-hop promised land, has now come to us and, and believes in what we're doing and is going to kind of give us maybe advice on where to step or where not to step and what to do. Thank you. Thank you very much. You guys rock, man. Stay up. DJ 001 is like the backbone of what we do as a DJ. He's the producer, he's, he's the man that makes the tempo. The unofficial driver of Boombox Bros. He has literally driven us to just about damn near every show we've ever played. No, I got my license more recently. He plays like a hundred instruments, so in the studio when we're together, it's just this phenomenal vibe. He's the level-headed one in the group. DJ 001 is the sound of the Boombox Bros. That's tight, dude. When we went to Colorado for the first time, Hog and I were beefing about something stupid. Communication breakdown, more or less. We had drove through the reservation. We had drove for hours. We're kind of just getting real heated at each other, and Stump just looks at me and he goes, did we drive all this way to be mad at each other or to perform and have fun? He's the guy that puts it in a perspective. He's that guy. Yeah, he's the one that brings it all back home. That is Justin Stump, you know, AKA DJ 001. Well, Smalls is part of the trio that is Boombox Bros. His part is one third of everything that is the Boombox Bros. As far as furthering my friendship with Hog, we had already been recording like as Boombox Brothers are starting to record as Boombox Brothers. Every time we got together, we would learn something new about each other. We have like really similar interests outside of hip hop music. Well, just to give you an example of a story, six months after we were in the middle of recording our, our debut album, Adventures in Rhyme Travel. About six months to a year in, I was going to the comic book store. I've been shopping that for a long, long time. I was down at the comic book shop over at Cab Comics. They sell magic cards there too, and I'm really into magic. I play a lot, I collect. 
I'm going in there to pick up my weekly comics on Wednesday. In walks Smalls, and he's in there. He had some comic books on hold, or he was looking for new comic books. And I walk in, and Hog's sitting in the back playing magic cards with this other dude, and I just couldn't stop laughing. We both looked at each other, and we were like, what are you doing here? Holy hell, we both have so much in common, and we never knew it. At that moment, we really kind of saw how synchronized the way we are and the way we've lived our lives. It was just hilarious to like go through life like that with someone that close and not even realize that you both have like the same passions and love. At that moment, we really kind of saw how synchronized the way we are and the way we've lived our lives. We've formed a kinship around being MCs and working in this group together. My right hand man, you know, we write together, we, we chill together, we eat together. He's a dear friend. People have asked me, oh, would you ever do shows? Like, let's say we did a tour and Smalls couldn't make it to every date or you couldn't make it to every date. Would you be okay with doing tracks without him? The answer is no. We're gonna keep doing this as long as we can. Or at least that's what he tells me. give a shout out to all the rest of the crews out there. There's a lot of uh, people that have our backs that have you know, earned respect throughout the years of doing what they do here in Arizona and in Flagstaff specifically. RJ for throwing hip hop shows. MC Transfer, who has been an MC in this town for many, many years. Transfer. Anthony with the whole Studio X production. Funked House. Big shout out to Il Mess for you know, always working with Smalls, getting us on bills together. DV8 of Crazy 8s. Crazy 8s. Big shout out to Greenhouse Fresh Produce. Greenhouse Fresh Produce. DJ So, which DJs now for Summit Dub Squad and produces Summit Dub Squad. His buddy Jess, DJ Khan. Azek. Womp. Womp. Speed Dub and a -Rec, holding it down in Flagstaff for years before I was here. Steven Carrillo. Tim Valdez. Mike Hefley has been a huge supporter since the beginning. Slick Nick. Always give a shout out to No One Self, my, my crew that I was with before Boombox Bros, Troy Thurman, Justin McGrew, Skinny. Good group of guys that all did hip hop here in Flagstaff and have influence as to what, you know, what we're doing now. track with some hard bars and just go straight for your brain. We have been the Boombox Bros. Yeah. Never dated Molly cause there's something about Mary. I don't trust the internet and still own a dictionary. Trip will not be the product that my feet rest in. Even with the blurry eyes, realize blessings. It's, it's a testing of patience, a rug from the matrix. Those are reality set to rhythm and a cadence. On special occasions, we'll stick to the basics. Hitting home runs while you're stuck at first base. When the bass hits the place, lifts tectonic plate shifts. Made this with motivation and dedication. Straight from the basement with ill communication. Came for the fakeness and aim to Replace it. Game needs to change, man, it's quite absurd. All these rappers sound the same like sheep in a herd or cattle trying to battle using cheap racial slurs. When the cat comes around, they'll be playing Tweety Bird. Move 180 grams and 33 and a third. No, I'm not a drug dealer, got away with words. Take more than 12 steps for this appetite to curve. Having drinks at the bar, only time I get served. He don't get me perturbed, piss off, you pissed on. Watch my crew go, Hank, dropping deuces on your lawn. We gon' keep on doing songs till freedom of speech is gone. When there's blood in the water, <laughs>
closet sick with you like the bombs of a thistle Keep it beneficial with the hammer and a chisel Leave my name in the game, triple B, the initials This art is official, never been artificial It's part of the mission to be smart and respectful It's part from the bars from the start to the fizzle The average of life trying to find a dark crystal We aim to keep it simple but don't get it twisted or wrong We may in fact miss the whole point of this song It's a life of Robbie chosen even knowing that it's hard And there's no turning back from this past battle <laughs> Also look forward to some really great other features on the, the Boombox albums in 2016 and 2017. Um, you know, it'll just be a good time to keep an eye out for some of the things that are coming up.